problem of Alzheimer's disease is one of the most important public health problems of our generation. And that's primarily because it is a disease of aging. And as our population continues to age, the prevalence, the number of people afflicted with Alzheimer's disease is going up dramatically. Today, about six million Americans have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, a fundamentally fatal disorder, lasts about 10 years, and the last few years are uh, terrible, uh, very expensive with respect to the uh, psychological uh, factors and, and, and the f psychological stress on caregivers, not to say anything about the patient, and of course, very, very expensive. Almost all of these patients require some sort of uh, care, some sort of institutional care, and so it's a, a tremendous burden on patients, on their family members, and on society. Alzheimer's disease is very prevalent in any society in which people are aging and continuing to age. In fact, uh, most of the recent calculations have been made in the emerging or emerged countries, uh, third world countries where the population is continuing to age and catching up in some respects to uh, countries like the U.S. and Japan and Europe, many European countries where the prevalence rates are astronomically high. In fact, the World Health Organization just about a month or so ago issued a report estimating that the cost, the direct and indirect cost of Alzheimer's disease now worldwide is approaching $650 billion, about 1% of the current GDP. And that's because the disease is now manifesting itself as other populations uh, continue to age uh, in, in countries where, frankly, uh, we didn't see a lot of Alzheimer's disease. I came to Wild Cornell because I really felt I wanted to make a difference and I felt we could make a difference here at Wild Cornell. This institution has some extraordinary scientists in the very field that we're working on, in the field of Alzheimer's disease and related neurodegenerative disorders. And I felt by coming to Wild Cornell, I would increase the critical mass of investigators so that we could truly make a major contribution to the disease itself, to understanding the disease process and eventually treating it effectively. The uh, Wild Cornell community is a terrific place to do research, mainly because of the critical mass of scientists and clinical investigators that we have here, also because of the incredible resources that we can collaborate with at Cornell and Ithaca, and finally, the uh, tri-institutions here make for an incredible, incredible group of people uh, and scientists and clinicians to, to combat this disease. The new Helen and Robert Appel Alzheimer's Disease Research Institute is literally doing work that we believe will uh, lead to, eventually lead to, and hopefully in the near future lead to treatments for this devastating disorder. The field of Alzheimer's disease research has witnessed incredible advances just in the last two decades, and I would characterize them in two areas. One is, again, the understanding that we have now about what's going on in the brains of patients who are so afflicted with this disease. What causes the actual loss of neurons, of nerve cells in the brain that cause the signs and symptoms of the disease, including the memory loss, the dementia, if you will. In another vein, we've also used this information to be able to diagnose this disease at its earliest stages. In fact, now we believe we can actually find the, the signs of the disease well before patients actually manifest the symptoms of the disease. And so we now have powerful diagnostic tests in the form of uh, uh, brain imaging, PET scans, etc., where we can detect uh, the telltale signs of the disease, the so-called amyloid plaques, for example, probably 10, 15 years before patients will actually come down with memory loss or the signs of dementia. So we've made some great strides in treatment just in the past five or six years. In fact, there are a number of new potential new medicines in clinical development, in the later stages of clinical development, that offer for the first time the possibility of slowing the progression of the disease. Having said that, I personally don't believe we're quite there yet with the ultimate cure. But in the next five years, and certainly in the next 10 years, my expectation is that this is a disease that we will find 
a fundamental treatment that either prevents the disease from occurring in the first place or dramatically slows its progression over time. Support for this research is absolutely uh, critical, absolutely critical. As you know, the government now is funding less research than most of us would desire, including the government, uh, just simply because of the, uh, of the government budget deficit, et cetera. And we actually have estimated that the funding for Alzheimer's disease research is literally about a penny or so on every dollar spent taking care of a patient with Alzheimer's disease. So public uh, support for research on Alzheimer's disease, private phil ph philanthropy, the kind of support that, for example, the Appells have given to start this new institute are absolutely critical if we're to find a cure for this disease.